Well, I bet you're wondering to yourself, how many times is this guy going to hold up this game to you and show it off and talk about it? Well, guess what? We're doing it again. Yes, that's right. More Symphony of the Night stuff. Previously, I had covered the Tiger handheld version of the game, which very recently got dumped online so that people could play it and you should not play it. It's awful. And, you know, it has been kind of my mission on this channel in the past, like, maybe two years to really showcase the world of Castlevania in a way that people haven't seen before and to kind of dive into the development process, uh, which is harder than you think to do because, honestly, there's not a lot of people to talk to about Castlevania who speak English. Or, and who had, you know, direct interaction with the game of, of any sort. But today, I did just that. I spoke with Jeremy Blaustein from, uh, now he runs a company called Dragon Baby, and they do English uh, translation from Japanese games. And so I'll leave a link down in the description below if you want to check out some of the titles that they've worked on. But before he worked on Dragon Baby, he was actually working with Konami. Yeah, so I was lucky enough to be able to chat with him for an interview and I asked him all the burning questions that I had regarding uh, so much of Symphony of the Night's English translation. Uh, I learned about the entire process as far as uh, what he did, how he came to work on it and everything, and uh, also some really pretty shocking bits about you know, the back and forth uh, between Konami and uh, him, which I'll be honest, there was none. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, we also learned a little bit about the what is a man line, uh, the what is a man, a miserable little pile of secrets line. So strap yourselves in, grab a drink, grab a snack and get ready for a awesome interview with Jeremy Blaustein. So first, I, I really do want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to to talk to me a little bit about Symphony of the Night. My first question, how did you come, just like really brief, like how did you come into working on video games and what's your background regarding like translation or localization? Well, you know, I was working at Konami uh, in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. I left there because, um, well, one one thing was because I had, I had a baby. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I was living, you know, with my wife and the newborn baby in a small little place in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. Commuting, you know, very tough commute. And uh, it didn't really seem like uh, the way I wanted to be a dad <laughs> with a baby sure. living, in this, you know. Yeah. Um, plus, I had wanted to get into R&D, and the president of the company, uh, for some reason, wanted me to continue doing things like, you know, shipping documents and stuff like this mm -hmm. so i was you know i was helping out in rng when they asked for help but meanwhile i was you know working in this button down suit wearing um office in tokyo mm -hmm. um and uh, i didn't you know particularly enjoy that aspect of the job so um so anyway, i was working at, to at konami in tokyo and uh, i was the only foreigner there so rnd would increasingly ask me lots of things to do lots of things translate this or what do i think about this or could i write a story for the you know for animaniacs because we don't know what the <laughs> these guys are you know <laughs> right we don't understand what what's an animaniac what's funny about it we don't, yeah you know nobody spoke english so right I, I had to do you know oddball things uh, and so when i left when i left to be like a dad mm -hmm. you know we moved back to the states i wanted a job that i could uh, do at home mm -hmm. And that turned out to be translating was all I could think of. And um, because I still had some friends in uh, in Konami, mm -hmm. and because at that time there were no, there was nobody specializing in game translation. There was no word localization. Then it was just you know, can you translate this? Mm -hmm. So it was me. Okay. You know, I think Castlevania was the second game. Might have been the second game I translated uh, as a freelance. Freelancer, the first being um, Vandal Hearts. The the Japan office would 
tell the American and European subsidiaries that, you know, we have this game, you know, we're making this game or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you think you guys could use this in your market? Mm -hmm. You know, and that decision would be made. We'll sell this in the U.S. Any necessary changes would be made graphically to it. Mm -hmm. Translation would be done. And uh, that's, you know, that's about it. Okay. But there wasn't, was there any directives from Japan? We want it done this way or that way? No, no, no. Zero. Okay. Zero. Oh, that's interesting. Just, here's a bunch of, here's a bunch of text. This is it. Please translate it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So who was in charge of hiring the English voice actors? Was that you or somebody else? No, actually, it was actually Haruhiko Inaba. Okay. Harry Inaba. Um. Now, many of the cast have appeared in very little outside of Konami's games. Um, do you know what the casting process was like as, as far as trying to get them on board? Well, I don't, I don't know specifically for this game because I wasn't, you know, I was in uh, the U.S. then and, and Inaba-san was uh, in Japan mm -hmm. and I had no, uh, I was not privy to any of it. But generally speaking, I know how those things work and how they worked at that time and you know how Inaba-san did those things so I, I have a general idea of what was done mm -hmm. to get them yeah okay. regarding the translations uh, was the intent to make the sound of the dialogue uh, very overly like dramatic almost like a, like a play in, in, in a way yeah very much so um, I tried to write it in a uh, a semi archaic way mm-hmm yeah, because you know, there's a lot of like, uh, what do you hear? Like Maria says, yeah, what exactly. Do you hear? And yeah, and you know, and and uh, to me, you know, if I had directed it, then the actors would have known what do you hear is supposed to sound like. But when I heard the voiceover, it was clear that they didn't. You know, they were just reading it, and they didn't know. Maybe they hadn't read, com you know, comic books as a kid like I did. Right. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> or you know, or whatever I'd read as a kid, Tolkien or or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I was thinking, and uh, I don't think you know Inaba-san for sure never saw that grammatical usage. Mm -hmm. You know those those kinds of um, mankind ill need to save you such as yourself. You know this is you know old kind of style writing, and right. uh, unless the director understands it, or the voice actors understand it, or both understand it, then you're going to get kind of kind of garbage yeah which is it, what you know what we got it it almost seems like in a way that a lot of people forget the fact that this was localized for an english speaking audience so because of that there's going to be some you know major differences um i remember reading about uh the the infamous what is a man a miserable little pile of secrets line and yeah. um i i read on there's a website Legend of localization. Uh, so there's yeah. there are these people that basically dive into localizations of games, and they specifically dove into that line. And apparently, yeah. there's a variation of it that came from a French writer named Andre Malraux, who said in no, it, no, it's not a variation. It's directly from Malraux. Okay, so I that is that, it is an intentional yeah, I, thing. Completely intentional. I was looking for I was I was looking through a book of quotations mm -hmm. to find a quotation that would carry enough weight that I felt could support what was supposed to be a um, a very dramatic scene. Oh. The, the Japanese that was in there was really very bland, and it, to me it did not match the the weight of seeing Dracula throw down a glass and saying, you know, I couldn't think of a, of a line that, would, that was dramatic enough. And so, um, but, you know, under, underpinning this whole thing philosophically, my yeah. life, I think it's hard to explain to an audience now that exists, um, you know, with Twitter and YouTube and the ability to instantaneously see anything from any country, you know. Sure. It, at the time this was done, my thinking was much more like that my job was to assist in the creation of an English language game that for English language players. They wouldn't know what the Japanese originally was. They would only know what was in front of them. Sure. And so whatever the source sources I used or whatever inspired me to write it, 
as long as I got down on paper something which fulfilled the mission statement, which was to create a, an entertaining product, mm -hmm. I felt that I was doing the important thing. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I mean, I didn't feel like the you know the the Japanese was written by a Japanese version of Shakespeare, and so you know I didn't really feel like there was anything you know lost in especially in reaching for a great quotation by you know a French philosopher that carried a lot of weight. Sure. So I just I just thought I was you know doing a doing the same job that a uh, that a, a game writer should do, and I didn't really. And I still, to some extent, I still don't think that a translator is sort of just a translator. Really, what they're doing is they're putting down content to be, you know, to be entertaining, to excite the audience. Sure, sure. And so yeah. you'd say more, your job was more uh, invested in localizing and less about like direct translation, so to speak. Well, that's not even the way I would put it. No. Um, the issue of direct translation and what you say localization, which really what you should say is, I mean, localize, localizing implies that you're doing it for a particular market to match that market's sort of needs. Okay. So I don't think that the American market particularly needed a quote by Mal Rowe. Mm -hmm. But I, what I'm trying to say, Mike, is that at that time, we didn't live in a world that was quite as big as it is now. Mm -hmm. Sure. It was much smaller, and it never occurred to anyone that the English version and the Japanese version needed to be the same, mm -hmm. because they wouldn't. The two, the two markets would never meet each other. Mm -hmm. They would never know each other. That's the world that we lived in at the time. And my whole philosophy towards the at that time, especially since it was only my my second game, my whole philosophy was simply, let's give them something which is entertaining. Mm -hmm. So it's not even a it's not even a direct translation localization issue. It's more of a I had more of a more of a writer's mentality, more of a more of an an R and D creator's mentality at that time, with regards to what I wanted to provide for the audience. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now in the current you know in the current universe of this debate, people would say that I was going you know I, I was I was. Uh, Stepping outside of my, you know, I was overstepping my, you know, my my responsibilities or my boundaries. But what I'm saying is that those that 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 common wisdom didn't even exist then. It was just more like, you know, like I said, give him something good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I gotta say, personally, at least myself, it is by far the best version of. Symphony of the Night, that original PlayStation 1, you know, uh, English dub was the best translation, in my opinion, of, 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 the, of the Japanese uh, original version of, uh, of the game. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I've, if... never, I've never seen any other, uh, other version of it, so I wouldn't know. I was going to ask you, actually, that exact question. Um, uh, Symphony of the Night got an English dub uh, afterwards uh, where Konami made the decision to relocalize the script or retranslate mm. the script into something that's more closely resembles the original Japanese dialogue. So they got all new voice actors and everything. And it does yeah. a, it does away with the more like dramatic delivery into something that's really kind of polarized a lot of people within that fandom. Um and I was curious if Konami asked for your help with re, you know, retranslating it uh, to make it more along that lines, or did they just kind of move on and do their own thing? That I was never, no one ever gave me a phone call okay. or an email or a, yeah. Would uh, if uh, if they were to reach out to you, like if if that if that is something that they did do, and, and they said, hey, we want to, you know, do something that's a little closer to the original Japanese. Do you think, especially, you know, because that was about 2000, I want to say like nine around there. I'm, I'm possibly wrong about that. But that was like around the time when they were doing it for the PlayStation Portable. Mm. Do, would, do you, would you, would you reapproach it with the same oh, yeah. ideas that you did back in the day? No, no, I would have, uh, I would have probably approached it with a much, with a, with a concept much closer to what, to where we are now, which mm -hmm. is that, um, you know, of course, you want things to sound good, mm -hmm. but your first go-to option should be to keep it as close to the original. And only if you cannot 
do a good job with that, mm -hmm. then should you, you know, really make changes of that of that substance. Okay. So yeah, no, my my philosophy has evolved on the subject uh, along with the way that uh, you know the the world the the changes in the world mm -hmm. again Twitter. Um, Instagram, everything. We're a, we're a completely interconnected world now, and at that time, it was just like uh, not at all that way. Oh, absolutely. Uh, regarding Koji Igarashi, the producer of the you know the uh, basically the the showrunner of the game or the game you know the series uh, producer uh, at that time. I wouldn't say yeah. I wouldn't say the series. You know, remember he he picked it up. Uh, I, you probably know more about this, but from what I've heard. Um, he really is the beneficiary of the hard work of of the you know original creators of Castlevania. Right. Yeah. He he and basically they they would pass it from team to team and try different he, things. And Koji yeah. Igarashi kind of was like the the producer of the, of the game series, like from uh, from uh, Rondo uh, of Blood on to you know the later games. He was the guy that they were uh, reapproaching almost every single time, aside from a couple of the games that got worked on uh, from the Kobe team. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any experience with any of the other uh, entries in the franchise for Castlevania that we don't know about? No, only playing them. Only playing them? Okay. Only playing them as a, as a young college student. <laughs> there were some very weird choices that I made looking back now. What, what would you say were the strangest choices that, in your opinion, that you made, like, looking back on it, like, retrospectively? Well, I can name a few that come to mind. Um, one is that uh, there is a... Um, there is a... Uh, a Vonnegut uh, thing in there. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's Grand Falloon. Okay. Is there not a monster in there called Grand Falloon? Symphony of the Night. Yeah, uh, Legion. Oh, Legion. Yeah, but that's... I think it was called Grand Falloon in my version, no? They may have called it Grand Falloon in the U.S. version, but later r versions of the character called him... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. ...called it the Legion. US version, the U.S. version, that's what... Because that's what I translated it as. Oh, okay, okay. So, but that's... That's because I was a, a big Vonnegut fan, and it's, it's a Vonnegut thing, the Vonnegut word. Okay. I probably didn't know. I might not have, you know, the Japanese might have been like region. Okay. Right. Sometimes, uh, you know, they'll use a katakana word that doesn't derive from English. Right. In this case, it might have been, you know, they know the word legion, but they know it as the German version, which might be region. Mm-hmm. And at that time, so I would have read that, and I would have said, "What the fuck is Region?" <laughs> I'm just, I'm kind of speculating on where I was at the time, but I might have said, "What the fuck is a Region?" Yeah, so apparently uh, that comes from Cat's Cradle by Vonnegut. Yeah, yeah, Grand Falloon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what, that uh, wasn't in the Japanese. That was my, that was my attempt to. Well, so Legion, I think, is this, if I recall correctly, this monster with a lot of different like heads built into this uh you know it's a it's basically a monster that is holding on to bodies and the bodies like as you yeah, attack like them that. the bodies yeah. fall and come after you and you have to attack them and so and so inspired by that i took this that you know i i guess i just thought about it i'm like oh god what am i gonna do with this i don't know what region is i could write r-e-g-y-o-n but i don't know what that means yeah so did they Maybe tell you right. it was it was called? Re no, there was not. Mike, there's nobody to talk to. Oh, really? The way it was done back then is an R and D team would finish. They're, they're creating the Japanese version. Sure. Then they'd say, "Oh, shoot, give me my vacation," because they didn't have a lot of vacations. <laughs> right. And they would get, uh, you know, two weeks off, three weeks off, four weeks off, something like that. It all split up. But the last thing they do before they turned off the lights and locked the doors of the office is they would make a text dump. Okay. And then they'd give it to somebody in the business department and they'd say, here, get this translated. And when we come back, we'll, you know, we'll shove it in the game. Wow. So there isn't anyone to talk to. Okay. There's there no back and forth. There's no emailing no, no, back no. then. There's no fax. Well, not, I mean, not, there was fax, but. Not, not, there's, yeah, there, <laughs> there was faxes, but 
<laughs> the point is, is that there was no infrastructure built to say, okay, let's do a good localization job. Wow. There was no LQA, which is Linguistic Quality Assurance. Mm -hmm. There was no translation cat tools, computer assisted translation tools. There's no, you know, keeping the glossary, you know, in a in a database. There was nothing like that. It was just, you know, here's a here's sometimes you would get you'd get physical pages. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they would fax you the pages. Yeah. Translate the thing. There's wow. no word localized. <laughs> it was just you know, <laughs> yeah. since you're on your own buddy. <laughs> wow. So I saw this thing Negion and I might have seen a picture of the monster mm -hmm. and I said, Well there is that thing in, in, in Vonnegut in Vonnegut where this idea of a grand falloon is I think it's like many souls, uh, you know, with a common purpose or something like this. So I, I drew from my own inspirations to try to breathe some life into what I was feeling when I read the Japanese script. Mm -hmm. And when I read, uh, you know, um, or if you look at item names, for example, I, I threw in a ton of um, Tolkien, you know, like weapon names like, you know, probably Glamdring and Falci Tyrfin. Falcion and stuff like that. Yeah, and all these things from Norse mythology and stuff. These were all things that I knew. Yeah. And, um, I don't know how many of them were in the Japanese and how many of them were just were my own. I saw Castlevania as being a, a big world mm -hmm. with, and I wanted it to feel epic. Mm -hmm. And so um, I reached into mythology and, you know, Tolkien things to try to give things weight, you know. Uh, as, as So you've gone, uh, said many times that there was really no back and forth between the team and you. Um, when you did kind of pass it off to them as, when you finished it and said, okay, here's my English translation, here's, you know, everything, did they fight you on anything or, or kind no, of say, no, no, no you, you can't do this or you can't do that? No, Mike, you, you still don't really get the, the picture. There, there was no team to talk to okay, for so, me as a translator. So, so there, nobody, there, nobody from Konami Japan at all reached out to you uh, after you delivered it to them? Correct. Zero. Wow. Zero. Never spoke to the team. Never heard a single word from them. Um, after I turned in the translation, the next thing I heard about it was, you know, was after the recording was done and the game was was done. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Wow. It's out. You know. So, yeah. Did so Konami Japan hired uh, English voice actors on their own side. Inaba-san was the guy. Who, we worked together in international uh, business department. Mm -hmm. We were we were quite good friends, and we've been business partners since then. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, he did he he did the directing of the voiceovers, and he his English was was better than most people's. Mm -hmm. So he did the directing, and he 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 did the casting. Mm -hmm. He would have called agencies in Tokyo and said, all right, send some people in for an audition. Oh, this guy sounds good or whatever. Yeah. And he would have assembled a cast, would have booked studio time. So most of those gone. voice actors were probably living in Japan at the time. They all were living in Japan. Okay. And, and, and I think they'd all worked with uh, with Konami probably at different times. Yeah. Yeah, they've all got a pretty storied history with uh, Konami. Yeah, so no, after I turned in the translation... It went to it went to you know to the business department. Inaba-san probably would have compiled it into a taken the parts that were <clears throat> for the for the cutscenes, mm -hmm. compiled them to a script, and copy and, it to the actors, and you know that's it. And you faxed all that information back to them, or you sent it, you know. I don't remember. Hmm. I don't remember. Uh, yeah, I know it was so know, long at, ago. <laughs> at that point, you know, at the point, I, you know, we had email. Sure. Um, this would have been what. 97 or 96 probably when it was in development probably nine, yeah 96 so you know we barely had email but yeah. we had email yeah, yeah yeah i might have actually i might have put it on a disc you know like a, a, a zip disc or something okay yeah I sent it over yeah that also makes sense yeah interesting well, that, that is a lot of really in interesting information. Um, mm. You know, l like I said before, a, a lot of this is very unknown to, to Castlevania fans. And I, I've kind of made it my mission on my channel to kind of dive into a lot of that. I've, as much information as I could share to kind of showcase, mm -hmm. you know, the job that, you know, people like yourself did. Because there's just 
not a lot of that history, and you know, it's kind of important to a lot of us uh, as fans of the franchise. So, you know, it's it's really appreciated. Yeah, you know, I think I think people, um, especially now, really overestimate how organized game companies are and were. You know, especially then. Yeah. You know, it was really flying by the seat of your pants stuff, and you have to remember also, mm-hmm. Japan was the center of the game universe. Oh, for sure. And they didn't really, you know, these guys, they didn't, back then, they didn't um, develop games really thinking that much about overseas market. Mm-hmm. You know, they were doing it for their own market, and the fact that uh, that Europe and the U.S. got a translation at all was like, you know, well, that's their problem. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. There was, like I said, there was no localization, there was no, um, because... Remember, uh, until the PS One came out, there was no, there was no, me- there wasn't enough memory in games for there to be any significant amount of text. Right. So it wasn't until the PS One came out that that the job that you know there, there was no job to be done really mm-hmm. for voice actors for 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 translators. It's so hard to wrap my head around the idea of of them basically just you know being like, here you go. And then you give it back to them, and they just don't respond with like, "No, you can't do this. You can't do-. like that." Would never fly in this day and age. There's the, all these companies are so like by the book. Like you can't say this, you can't do that. So it's really yeah. interesting to learn that you basically came up with these ideas for what you wanted to do with the lo- with the uh, translation, and sent it off to them, and then they were just like, "Cool." So that that in and of itself is kind of mind blowing. Yeah, I see I see why that would be why that would be so. You know, it's just that no, nobody, you know, you also have to understand the lang- the linguistic barrier. Mm-hmm. Nobody, you know, nobody speaks English. Right, sure. So um, and then and then no one and no one who speaks English speaks Japanese. Mm-hmm. So a translator is kind of on their own. They're 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 able to talk to both sides, but neither of the two sides they're talking to can talk to each other. <laughs> so yeah, you're how, kind of shouting into a vacuum, you know. How long did you have to work on the the script? I don't remember specifically, but I would guess it would have been probably something like three months. Okay. Wow, that's such Give a short take. time. Oh yeah, to but that's a long on. time. It's a long time for now. Well, and, yeah. Uh, I just... Also, what, what's very different is that I translated that one also uh, all by myself. Okay. And these days, that doesn't happen anymore. I have a whole team. Yeah, you know, you 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 have at least you know five or five or people, five people working on it at least. Mm-hmm. Games are so and much bigger now too, though. Yeah, and so that's the other reason why I was able to sort of, you know, the translation has a single fingerprint on it, which is mine. Yeah. So it's it's uh, consistent in that way. When you were implementing um, the the quotes from like uh, Andre Malraux, for example, um, trying yeah. to you know spice things up, you know, in your own yeah. way, did yeah. you ever think about? Um, well, wait a minute. So this game takes place in whatever it is, like sixteen, like late sixteen hundreds or early seventeen yeah. or mid seventeen hundreds. What was that? Did that ever come across to you and be like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't put this in because I want to stay true to like when this when this language would would come about, like you know, in no, terms because, of time. You know, well, first of all, no no one had ever heard of Melrose. I've never heard of Melrose. Okay. Know? So, uh, so there's that, mm-hmm. um, and uh, it it no, it sounded, you know, I don't know, it, <laughs> somehow it, somehow it sounded what is meta, uh, you know, it sound it was such an it sounded like such an arrogant thing to say. Yeah. You know. Um, and it, it just seemed to fit, you know, Dracula's kind of yeah, his his, you know, his arrogant, <clears throat> looking down at human personality, and so that it just it just felt right, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, and then the you know, line, by the way, was something like, uh, you know, uh, w- you know, which one of us is right, we shall see, you know, by you know, by you know. <clears throat> We'll we'll prove which one of us is right by you know who wins and battle. Right. It was some it was some line like that, and I just 
It just, it was just such a, th it just, I couldn't figure out a way to give it any, um, yeah, all I can think of is the proper gravity that, that the scene deserved, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, the line is, uh, Dracula says, let's see, so the Japanese mm -hmm. version with a basic translation, uh, he says, foolish drivel, I will prove to you which of us is right with death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's right. Yeah, that's right. And I don't know what the I don't know how they retranslated it. Uh, well, Maybe. then that became your version, which is what is a man a miserable little pile of secrets? Well, yeah, but, but what about in the PlayStation version? That is the PlayStation version. Oh, the the death thing. Yeah. So so yeah, that I mean, so that version that I just read is a fan translation, a loose Japanese oh, no, translation. But, what did they what version what what did they say in the playstation uh, i'm sorry not the playstation version the newly released one oh the playstation portable version I mean, a little pile of secrets you know everybody everybody remembers that line oh for sure <laughs> yeah. it, it's so it's, it's become completely it's iconic to the franchise and it, and really gaming in general it's a meme you know yeah and, uh, at this point yeah there's not that many uh li you know game lines that become memes so i i'm really proud of it you know yeah, I'm not. Um, for whatever reason, it's pulling up the original dialogue from the PS1 version. Yeah, well, I know the reason. The reason is because, however they translated it, it was uninteresting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why it, it it had no impact on, you know. Yeah. And and it and it's a great scene. I mean, it's the opening scene of the game. It's fucking like, you know. Yeah, it's iconic for for sure. It's iconic. Um, so it deserved, you know, it deserved. It deserved some weighty, some weighty treatment, and I wasn't really interested in changing anyone's work. I just was more interested in serving the interests of the game mm -hmm. for the for the fans. Yeah, and I just couldn't see any way to uh, to deliver the goods with that with that Japanese line. Maybe now, and you know, the other thing is time. You know, mm -hmm. like if I had, you know, if you give me like you know two weeks or you know a week or whatever or two days even to work on a single line maybe i would have come up with something great but i'm getting paid per word under an extreme time pressure mm -hmm. and so now people people can spend um a thousand hours if they want like uh, legends of localization dissecting the uh the translation that was done mm -hmm. but when you're doing the work or when you're doing the voice recording you you know you're making a a split second decision and you maybe only have five minutes you know at most to think about it sure or you know, you're not gonna you're not gonna earn enough money. You're not gonna finish on time. You're not gonna yeah. You gotta um, move on to other stuff. Yeah. You gotta move on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, that's the other thing that people really need to understand. Yeah. Were there any like text limitations? Like you can't use uh, so many words uh, to describe something that like they couldn't fit it in. Was there any kind of memory yeah. limitations? Oh. Of course, that's a common thing now. Mm -hmm. But at the time, I would say. There wasn't even enough communications between, you know, anybody that would have known, you know, the issue of text limitations. Because mm -hmm. you're going from Japanese, which is a, um, a two-bit, 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 you know, um, characters. Mm -hmm. English, which is one-bit characters. Um, so... Yeah, anybody that would have known of such such a boring thing as that certainly didn't communicate with anybody that had the, you know, that communicated with me. Mm -hmm. So no, it, of course now these days you, when you do a localization, people will say, you know, we've got three lines, uh, you know, twenty six emoji per line or twenty six fifty two characters per line. Um, even then, it's not an exact science because mm -hmm. based upon the the type of letter i doesn't take up as much space as a as a w for example right right but uh, but back then no no there was no instructions so whoever took my text and had to insert into the game probably had to do a certain amount of fiddling around to get it all in there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then there's the issue of you know how quickly the the text is shown and you know right. so somebody did a lot of fitzing and futzing um and uh, they wouldn't, whoever did that, wouldn't have been someone who was able to read English. Um, sure. 
yeah. or understand it well enough to know what what the fuck it said, even if they had enough time to, to read it, which they probably didn't. Right. Yeah. The process of localization, it wasn't a thing, it, so no time was given for it. No adequate amount of time was given for it to be done right, and that's yeah. why, um, if you see any text uh, errors, mm -hmm. misspellings, or anything like that, it's because they didn't even have the time for a, an LQA process. Right. They didn't have time to, to make sure yeah, that everything was correct. After the text is inserted, you know, you have it read by QA people, linguistic QA people mm -hmm. in the, you know, in the different languages, you know, 30, 40, 50 hours, they'll spend you know, playing the game and checking it over, goes back into the, you know, <laughs> into the bug system reports and mm -hmm. all that stuff cleaned up. Um, but there was no such process back then. So, wow. That's incredible. Hmm. You know, we're really talking about a different world, a, a, a less connected world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And yeah. The expectations with regards to, again, we didn't even have the word localization. It was just, you know, <laughs> translation. Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. Put it in English. <laughs> and even and even then, you know, there'll be people that say, "Well, you didn't do your job. You didn't translate it." Mm -hmm. But again, what I would say to that is that. That's because you really don't understand that. We did not live at a time then when there was any reason to believe that a, uh, a, an American person would play even the French version, mm -hmm. let alone knowing, you know, being able to display, you know, the, 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 the Japanese version versus the French version versus the American version, mm -hmm. you know, on a screen which, you know, compared the two and then run that through Google Translate to check on it. It wasn't that world. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's totally mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't say that as a uh, uh, as an excuse, but rather, an in, I'm interested in in allowing helping to people to understand that it's it's <clears throat> it's been such a short amount of time that we've been living in this in this world mm -hmm. as it is now, and you know, yeah, mm. no, it's totally different uh, as far as the, everything that you've you know uh, that you worked on back then as compared to today for sure totally different world and I, I think that people will understand that too because um a lot of the fans of not only symphony of the night but really just like video games in general uh especially if you grew up around that time um you kind of understood that the tr the people who were translating these games from japanese to english they <laughs> they they had to make certain sacrifices you know, uh, you know, when in compared to the Japanese original dialogue, uh, of course, mm. you know, you needed to change it to market it to an audience that is a totally different audience. So right, right. you had to take liberties, you had to do different things. And you're not the only one that that I've read interviews about that. So that aspect isn't really surprising to me, because like some of the mm. other mm. Um, people that I've read interviews uh, with uh, for games like um, uh, like Earthbound and Chrono Trigger and stuff like that, like a lot of the Final Fantasy type stuff uh, with yeah. Squ with SquareSoft. Uh, it was it was a different world back then, so games were just developed differently and they were uh, brought over to America very differently. So right, that, that right. all I think I, I think people are going to get, um, but mm. it's more the little nuanced details like you know the fact that you ha you sent you know they sent it to you and they were like you know here you know we're gone. And now you do yeah. it, and then you send it back, and you got nothing back. Like you can't do this. Yeah. You can't. I think that portion is going to be the most interesting. Oh, and, that's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea that would surprise people. Yeah, because mm. that's interesting to me, and uh, mm. me as a fan of the franchise and everything, uh, and really mm. just video games in general. So that portion's really fascinating, and also, of course, to get it officially on record that. Uh, that bit for uh, what is a man in miserable little pile of secrets was in fact directly from Mauro. So, oh yeah, directly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I think I think those are going to be the big the two big takeaways for that because all that was kind of speculation. You know what the interesting thing I, I've heard from a French guy <clears throat> mm -hmm. that uh, the, that particular quote from Mauro, interestingly enough, is it was written. Uh, it was a character that was in one of his books that said it. Mm -hmm. And Malro, in fact, philosophically, did not believe that man was uh, nothing but a, a miserable little pile of secrets. Right. But the character that he was writing <laughs> that, mm -hmm. that, <laughs> did believe so. <laughs> yeah, it was in reference to, like, adultery or something like that. Something, yeah, something like that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> it's, 
miserable little pile of secrets. <laughs> awesome. Well, I do yeah. again. Thank you so much for your time. Oh, uh, you're most welcome. Wow, what a lot of information about this little game. Symphony of the Night is so near and dear to so many of us, and it was really cool to learn some of the information that Jeremy spoke about in this video. Uh, again, thanks so much to Jeremy Blaustein for chatting with me. Uh, go check out Dragon Baby, and again, links are in the description down below. Now, what did you guys think about this video? Let me know down below what you thought. Constructive comments are always appreciated. And as always, I'll be back for more Castlevania content later in the future. See ya.